Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose xn is a sequence of real numbers that converges to the value x. Then every subsequence of xn also converges to x. Okay, now before we get to the proof, let's remind ourselves of some things. What is the definition of a subsequence? Well, suppose we have a sequence which goes x1, x2, x3, and so on and so forth. And also, suppose we have a strictly increasing sequence of positive integers, which goes n1, n2, n3, and so on and so forth. Then the sequence which goes x and 1, x and 2, x and 3, and so on and so forth, is called a subsequence of the sequence we have here. So for example, if the strictly increasing sequence of positive integers was 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, then the subsequence of the sequence we have here would be x2, x4, x8, x16, x32, and so on and so forth. Right. Now, a property of strictly increasing sequences of positive integers is that for all positive integers k, nk is greater than or equal to k. And sometimes we like to denote this sequence by xn in parentheses. And we like to denote the subsequence by xnk in parentheses. And the way you can think about it is in the first case, you can think of n as your variable. So we go x1, x2, x3, and so on and so forth. While in the second case, we can think of k as our variable. So really it goes xn1, xn2, xn3, and so on and so forth. Okay, next, what does it mean for xn to converge to x? Well, by the definition of the limit of the sequence, it means the following. It means for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a positive integer h such that for all positive integers n greater than or equal to h, the absolute value of xn minus x is less than epsilon. But then what does it mean for xnk to converge to x? Well, well notice in this case, I'm writing limit as k approaches infinity rather than limit as n approaches infinity. This is because in the first limit, n is our variable. In the second limit, k is our variable. Okay, now what does this mean? Well, similar to what we have here, it means for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a positive integer h, such that for all positive integers k greater than or equal to h, the absolute value of x and k minus x is less than epsilon. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. Now, we're trying to prove a statement about every subsequence of xn. So let's give ourselves an arbitrary subsequence of xn, and we'll denote it by xnk. The whole goal is to show that x and k converges to x, which means we want to show that this second statement is true. Well, since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than zero, let's give ourselves an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. And with this arbitrary epsilon greater than zero, we want to show that this is true. So we want to find a positive integer which makes this statement turn out true. Now remember, we're working under the assumption that xn converges to x. So that means we know that this first statement is true. And the first statement works for every positive real number. So in particular, it must work for the positive real number epsilon that we have in our proof. 
So taking epsilon to be the epsilon we have in our proof, we have that this is true. So there is some positive integer h, such that for all positive integers n greater than or equal to h, the absolute value of xn minus x is less than epsilon. Now remember, the goal is to find a positive integer which makes this statement turn out true. Well, our claim is that h will make this statement turn out true. So we'll take h to be the h we have in our proof. So we proceed to show that this statement is true. Well, since we're trying to prove a statement about every positive integer greater than or equal to h, let's give ourselves an arbitrary positive integer greater than or equal to h. We'll call it k. And from here, we want to show that this inequality is true. Well, since this statement is true, well, we know that this statement works for every positive integer greater than or equal to h. So in particular, since k is greater than or equal to h, this statement must work for k. So if we take n to be k, well, then we have that the absolute value of xk minus x is less than epsilon. Okay, but that's not what we want. We want the absolute value of xnk minus x is less than epsilon. So how do we get that? Well, we can use this fact regarding strictly increasing sequences of positive integers, right? Since this statement works for every positive integer, it must work for the positive integer k. So we must have that nk is greater than or equal to k. And k is greater than or equal to h. So nk is greater than or equal to h. So since this statement works for every positive integer greater than or equal to h, it must, in particular, work for nk. So taking n to be nk, we have that the absolute value of x nk minus x is less than epsilon. And that is precisely what we wanted to show. Now let's put this all together to make sure that we've actually proven this statement. Well, we see given an arbitrary positive integer k greater than or equal to h, it follows that this inequality is true. Since k was arbitrary, this means we have shown for all k greater than or equal to h, this is true. So we have found a positive integer which makes this turn out true. Namely, it's the positive integer h that we have here. So we've shown that this is true. And we proved that this is true under the assumption of some arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. Since epsilon was arbitrary, we have shown for all epsilon greater than zero, this is true. So we've proven this entire statement, which amounts to proving that our subsequence x and k converges to x. And really, x and k was an arbitrary subsequence of xn, so we have shown that every subsequence of xn converges to x. And that is exactly what we wanted to prove. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.